shark's about to go flying. Well, it's a beautiful Thanksgiving morning, and it is frosty outside, real crunchy. And, uh, yeah, I got some time before we go do some family things. And on Sunday, this past Sunday, I sold the Alice. So the Alice has been in all my videos. I sold it, kind of sad to see her go, but she's going to a good home. It's going to a, a hay farmer in north of Scranton, Pennsylvania. So... I am uh, happy about that, and I have to deliver it this Saturday. However, in order to deliver this, I need to get this Ford off of the trailer that everybody saw me pick up at the auction. And uh, it's been sitting on my trailer for a while because I'm actually not too sure how I was going to get it off the trailer. And now that <clears throat> I got fire under my ass, I have to get it off the trailer. So, this... Uh, begs the question how do I get this thing off and I was thinking maybe I'll get you know the John Deere use the backhoe and like walk it down but I kind of feel like that's unsafe and I think the tractor might go rolling and remember you know I paid a decent amount for this tractor so I think the best way for me to get this off the trailer is to use a winch and I've been you know bugging myself to put a winch on the trailer for a very long time so that I could load tractors like this onto the trailer onto my by myself so the next thing I want to look at is uh, what type of winch do I want to use for this. And about three years ago, my neighbor gave me this Quadratec winch. And I was sitting out in the rain and snow for years. And he just gave it to me for free. And this is it right here. So this is an old Quadratec winch. Um, I really don't know much about them other than like I believe they're used commonly on Jeeps but I don't really care what it's primarily used for I care about the rating and it's rated to pull 10,000 pounds um, the issue is is I have no clue if it works whatsoever but um, you know this locking mechanism seems to work well so assuming the electronics are okay I mean it should turn the motor and we'll just have to see all right, so I got this marine battery. This is the one out of the boat. I'm gonna use that to test this winch to see if it even works. And I do wanna, I misspoke. I said I got this controller on Amazon, but I did not. I actually got it from Quadratech's website itself. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, this would plug in accordingly. And it looks like it does. Um, I gotta get a flashlight because I gotta see like there's like a little keyway here, but I don't see a keyway, a key in here. But it does say, you know, I don't know if you guys can see that. But the numbers do say, you know, one, two, three, four. So I do want to make sure these numbers are in the right orientation. And I'm gonna get the chicken shit out of there too. So these are numbered, and look, you know, it's numbered in the same orientation. Oh look, I misspoke. There is a bump out. That goes right here so i see one two three four and the bump out is there so one yeah this will work this will be a direct plug-in that's nice you know when you got the right parts things go together a lot better all right let's do positive to positive just a test you don't gotta go crazy and now let's do the negative all right so I got the battery hooked to it got this winch controller let's see if this thing even works let's try winch in nothing whoa okay 
Let's try a winch out. Interesting. So you hear the clicking, something's going on. There were a ton of spiders in here. All right, so what I did is I took a quick little picture of where these wires went on the motor so I could remember when I take these off. Because what I'm going to do is I want to test the motor itself. And the motor is grounded here from the battery to here. So this is a direct ground for it. And each one of these posts, um, which is done nicely, it came with brass washers too, or brass washers and nuts. Um, but each one of these posts, depending on where the power goes, is how this thing spins and when it spins. So, um, I don't know exactly which one's which, but I'm going to look it up in a diagram. So that way I can know, because I'm assuming if I put power to this post, it'll spin one way. But if I put power to this post, it'll spin the other way. All right. Looking at this solenoid, I, I can't find the exact make, model number. However, it looks like Quadratic uses these Thompson solenoids. And this diagram, based on looking how mine is, looks to be exactly how I'm set up. And so assuming that this is correct, this solenoid here, you can see at the top um, where my cursor is, this is for the controller for the winch. And uh, everything seems to line up there, as well as where all these terminals go to, whether it's the battery or the motor. And looking at this, I have a pretty good understanding as to how I can test this motor. So you see this long red cable, that is to the battery, so that's your positive. And um, this here is called a short red cable, that goes to your armature. And then there is a yellow cable and a black cable. So now I have um, a yellow and a green. All right, I don't really have a red. I have a yellow and a green. But I believe that my armature needs to be, power needs to go to my armature. And then depending on if you want to go forward, this would be your yellow cable. And then if you want to go in reverse, it would be your black cable. That is my best educated guess based on what I'm reading here, and I think that's what I'm seeing uh, at the winch. So let's do some testing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test. So I have my um, negatively just sitting there, and let's see if I can do this with one hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my positive, and I'm going to go to F1 and F2 which is these posts here. So F1 spins it one way, F2 spins it another way. So as I hit winch out, when I look at my meter, I have 12 volts. So that tells me, okay, power is going to F1. And when I do the same thing over here to F2 and I hit winch down, power does go to F2 or one, whatever the hell it is. But when I go up, I get nothing. So it tells me that the controller is providing or the switch is providing power pro properly to these poles and I can already see rust in here so I think we're gonna find out that my problem is an electrical connection within here not the solenoid like I was thinking. All right, so water definitely got into the motor. Um, doesn't look as bad as I actually thought it was going to be. But one thing I am noticing is um, the points are actually not connected. So this one's like rusted. Yeah, see this one's rusted shut. And yeah. The springs are loose in this thing, so I gotta clean this up because I'm wondering. I think if I actually put the br so these are brushes. If I actually put the brushes right onto the contactor here, it might actually work. Then, ooh, yeah, it's coming in sideways. Yeah, let me lube this thing up and uh, let me try lubing this thing up and cleaning it out. So we can call the back end of this motor like the brush holder. There's probably a fancy term for it, but pretty much they have these brushes here that sit on the back of the armature. 
and you need contact on these in order for this thing to spin and you see this one's actually not too bad the spring's working but this one is pushed in this one's not going to go that one's locked this one's kind of locked so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take all these brushes out and uh, including the spring and i'm going to try to clean all this up so that way they move a lot freer That's out. Let's try and push. There you go. There we go. Okay. That is your point in your spring. And this is actually in good shape, believe it or not. So I think we just got to do some cleanup here. And she should be able to work. So I'm going to take each one, <clears throat> each one of these off. Clean them up. And reinsert them. Reinsert them. Reinserting them will be tricky because i got to re-twist the spring into this little clip. But... You guys can watch me do it. All right, so I took <clears throat> I took the motor apart, and I'm just gonna clean everything here. Well, because I need to. All right, so I cleaned up all of these, all the brushes and everything, and I put some, sp I put the springs back in. So like now, if I like push on this thing, you see how it like spring loaded, it comes back. That's how they should work. All right, they should work that way, that they're, they push and they're spring loaded. So now I should be able to push these all the way back. And I'm just gonna worry about these two. Yeah, okay. That went on nice. All right, let's put these springs back on. So I'll, <clears throat> I'm gonna say, make it easier for yourself. Do two springs on one side because these are these are covered. And then I would do, and then just put these ones in here. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So unfortunately, it was started to rain outside, so I had to throw everything back inside. Anyway, uh, so I'm working on my little workbench here. So I got the brushes on, I feel good about that. And now I'm going to put the end plate on. Um, I do gotta go get a screwdriver though because I gotta figure out where the screws are gonna go. Um, but I do wanna tell you whenever I take these motors apart and usually they're starters, but same damn thing. This is pretty much a starter. Um, I like to grease the end bearing. So I usually get, like to use heavy gear grease. Um, just works well for these. Alright. Alright, let's uh let's test the winch. Oh. Negative and positive. I'm just throwing them on. All right, and then let's plug in this bad boy. And let's try the winch. So, winch out. Woo, look at that. Winch in. Man, we're money, we're golden. So the way this winch is set up, you're supposed to take a bolt and thread it in here through the nut. All right, and it appears that here, the bolt got stuck inside here. And I tried uh, putting like a pipe wrench on there to see if it would turn it on, lube it up, it will not. So when that happens, uh, the way I free these up is by welding a nut on here and then welding it in real good, and then I actually back it off. In this case, I might actually try, because I don't have a lot to work with, and this is aluminum here, I'm not trying to blow it to shit. So I think what I'm gonna do <clears throat> is weld, literally weld it in here, like fill it in so much, and then try to spin it off. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. 
Let's see if it'll do it. <clears throat> so sorry guys, the camera died, so I had to put it on a charger. But in the meantime, welding the nut, I just wasn't getting in enough grip, so I put a bolt on here and I welded the most ugly weld I can I could imagine and now I'm able to back this thing out and now we got a set of new four hardware we're gonna leave these in and uh, this thing's ready to be installed This one might be a little off. No, we're good. Yeah, this is gonna work out. It's gonna work out real good. Yeah, we got some wiggle room to spare, so she's good, bolted. So we'll take this off, and now we gotta weld it to the trailer. So, the plate's going to be like this. <clears throat> Excuse the voice. Plate's going to be like this. Um, and I'm going to have to tap this thing over quite a bit. But pretty much I'll be able to I'll weld this whole channel here. And then I'll weld this side. Weld that there. The only thing um, else I'm going to do is on the back side of this, there is my... Um, tubular beam there I'm going to weld that so I'll have this strict base as well um, and then now that I'm looking at this and you see you can flex already I'm going to have to add another beam on the back um, but yeah she's flexing already so we're going to have to figure additional support but that, look, that looks kind of cool doesn't look too bad sorry about my voice it's a little hoarse but I got a little cold in any case, I want to talk to you guys about welding, especially like in this case, welding rods. So um, for just about 90% of the jobs I do when I go welding, I like to use 6010 welding rod and then also 7018, which is this here. 6010 is a great rod for like welding um, metal that's like imperfect or if it's got like some rust or you got to plow through some crap that's in the middle 6010 is great and it makes a great like root pass and that's what I'm using for this application so for because I'm doing some heavy plate here I'm going to do a root pass of 6010 and then I'm going to do a cap of 7018 and 7018 is a great bond with 6010 and it provides a beautiful good uh, finish look all right All right, so I finished welding it. Now, I welded the whole sides here on both sides. And then what I did is I also added a support bar here. And then you, see, you can see I put this huge fat bead right there. And that's going to help it from pulling up. And then I got it welded like a big stitch. You actually can see the heat mark. See that orange heat mark? So you can see where I put a big stitch. And I got a tubular steel beam there. And I think that's going to be all right. Um, but... We're gonna do a PMOT test and make sure it works. So now what I'm doing is just cleaning this with alcohol. All right, I wiped the, f I put a, f a flat brush around here so I can just clean it up. But I wanna clean this debris up because we're going to paint this thing. And painting it will prevent it from rusting. All right, now she's looking good.
I'm going to give this one more coat and then I'm going to put the winch right back on. All right, this thing's starting to look good. Um, now what I'm doing is I got this cable. So this Allen is where the cable is going to go. So I'm going to tighten this up and then I'm going to start wrapping this thing around uh, the barrel here. So I'm going to manually crank it in. Let's get our gloves on and winch it in. All right, so I got the winch on. I have this logging chain that I went underneath the bucket and I strapped it to there. And what I'm gonna do is, so, I get the winch hooked up to the logging chain and then the logging chain to the frame under the bucket because I'm hoping the chain will pick the bucket up as it goes down the ramp. And anyway, I'm going to loosen this up a lot and then I'm going to start pushing uh, the tractor off the trailer and it's pretty god the welds hold. There she goes. Jane's making some noise. Let's see if this thing bows out. <laughs> that truck's about to go flying. Okay. You couldn't ask for better than that. All right. This is the real test. And let's try to winch. Let's winch the tractor in. All right, we're getting tight on it, so now let's let's watch it and see if this bows. She's still holding. Let's see if that weld pops. Oh, that weld didn't pop. All right. That witch has some balls.
if I had two people, someone can turn the damn wheel. I'm going to say I am very pleased and very happy with uh, how the winch turned out. Um, and yeah, I'm going to say we're good to go because uh, I think all the welds went really well. Uh, actually, this thing didn't even bow out at all. I was waiting for some pop in and shit, but no, nah, nothing. And the weld that I was most concerned with, which is the back weld here, she's holding good. And... You know, if it's able to get, you know, this tractor up and pull it up from the ramp. And this is a steep incline. Like, it's it's too steep. Ideally, you want these flat. You know, so it's able to go up this 30-degree incline. Yeah, I'm happy with the winch.